welcome to a new episode of the Rethink Podcast for a dialogue about mental health, leadership, sustainability knowledge and competence within the company, and of course, employee engagement. What else? My guest is Inge von Bell, co-founder of the Herculean Alliance and co-author of the book Employee Engagement, What Else? A book that gives business leaders a useful toolkit to up their engagement game by using best practices from other areas like marketing and technology. The pandemic has transformed the workforce and the workplace. Many, employ- many employers now accept and even embrace the remote and hybrid workplace models. In short, the pandemic is very much still a fact of our life for many of us. But however, it's uh, fair to say that we've learned to adapt to new behavioral patterns and expectations as we do our job. For, t- for today's episode, my guest is Inge van Bell, co-founder of Herculean Alliance. Inge, welcome to Rethink Podcast. Hi, Nicoletta. It's good to, to be here. Thank you for having me. I know that you have an ex- a 10-year experience in advising organizations. Can you please describe us what are the highlights of your experience in, in this uh, corporate relation, or how can I define it? Just please do this for me. <laughs> yes, uh, with pleasure. So uh, yes, indeed, I've been active in the corporate world myself for many years. And 10 years ago, I decided to become an entrepreneur. Uh, and as a female entrepreneur, we're quite uh, rare sometimes. So, but of course, it's. Uh, I've also had the pleasure to uh, have a lot of uh, international experience. So uh, not just in the world of uh, sustainability or well-being, but also everything that is related to workplace culture and employee engagement. So it's my pleasure uh, to share some of my insights uh, with you today. Uh, and I hope uh, that I can contribute to, uh, to some uh, interesting uh, discussions uh, later on. A lot is in store when it comes to workplace trends in this year and the next uh, years to come. The continuation of the Great Resignation, uh, it's still on the top of, of yeah. this trend. Of course, it's followed by the remote and hybrid work. It's, it's still it's here to stay. Um, also, the prioritization of employee well-being. We'll discuss about this uh, in, uh, in today's interview. And also, there is a shortage, uh, a talent shortage and reskilling within the organizations. Maybe we can go through all these uh, trends that we are going to, to face in, in, uh, in, in a very short time. So as a, as a result of the great resignation, employee retention is now a top priority for many teams and organizations. What can you tell us about this? Yes, so as you quite rightly say, uh, Nicoletta, uh, these are very challenging times, uh, but also very interesting times, I must say. And as you say, we already feel that the world has changed forever. It will never be the same as it was before uh, 2020. But um, at the same time, I think it's a perfect opportunity to rethink uh, a few tendencies, because actually what we see, and I, we are not the only ones who say this, of course, is that what happened with COVID is not something that just came out of the blue. There were already a lot of underlying trends uh, that just were accelerated and emphasized because of the COVID crisis. And one of these are, is indeed uh, the great resignation, or I prefer to call it a great uh, shift, because it's not just resigning, they're also going somewhere, right? And, uh, and the war on talent. There was already a war on talent before, uh, now it is huge. So, and the only way um, to, um, to face these challenges as organizations is to invest in people, to invest in employee engagement because that's a huge competitive advantage um, in the future. So I would say, uh, if you haven't uh, been doing this yet, please do so now. Um, And the main thing that I would also like to advise organizations on is that it's not just a question of allocating a lot of budget. Uh, It's not only the rich organizations that can do this, but uh, it's mainly by making your culture, your very specific culture clear. Because if you have a very clear identity, whatever it may be, 
Uh, but if your identity is very clear, you will attract the people that belong to, uh, to you. We always say your vibe attracts your tribe. So that's exactly that. So if you want to attract people, top talent, that's what you should do. But we'll go into that later on. We, you, you are mentioning, and I was mentioning, the great uh, resignation. This is the term terminology uh, that we are uh, very much used to these days. But uh, also uh, data shows that many employed people are not rushing to fill open jobs either. And um, some economists say we, we face more of a great hesitation uh, about returning to the workforce than a great resignation. It has to do something with um, this balance between uh, mental health and work-life balance, and can we dive into the health well-being uh, at the workplace? And what is in your what in your view has changed in uh, employees' mental health over the past year? Yes, I think um, there are different challenges in the workplace, but uh, as you pointed out, uh, well-being is, is one of the most uh, obvious ones at the moment. Um, and I think um, we can all see, <laughs> you don't have to be a, a doctor or, um, or a specialist in, in uh, mental well-being, we've all seen it, uh, there's a decrease in well-being not just mental well-being, because we tend to focus a bit on the mental uh, part, um, but there's also a decrease in, in physical well-being. A lot of people have gained uh, weight, uh, haven't exercised a lot, so a lot of people don't feel well. We can't just blame that uh, on work-related stress. It's just a disbalance, a general disbalance, in my opinion, uh, uh, of people. People just don't feel uh, very good. So um, I think um, if you look at, at this reality, uh, this is what's happening now. Um, I don't know if you want to dive into that more or... Um, um, we, we can relate to the workplace because this is where we, we uh, tend to uh, live more, more of most of our time. I mean, we are at least eight hours per day in in this environment, or yes. connected to, to to our workplace. And this is why I, I was thinking in discussing about the mental health being in the context of the the workplace, and what are the leaders doing in terms of emotionally supporting their employees? Yes. Well, I think. Um... It's it, as, a, as an organization, it's very important to show that you care, of course, obviously, but it's also important to focus on these aspects. And, and uh, but at the same time, um, it is a mistake, according to me, to just put that responsibility just in the hands of an employer. I think it's a shared responsibility. I think employees also should take their part of the, of the responsibility and also take care of themselves. But of course, Okay, what can leaders do now um, um, in this whole, let's say, uh, disbalanced uh, work environment? I think um, as a leader, um, uh, we first must acknowledge that actually uh, the COVID crisis or the pandemic was not just um, a health crisis. For some, it was also an economic crisis, but we always point out too that it's actually a leadership crisis. And uh, we've seen that a lot of the leaders um, at this time, leaders or let's say managers, uh, senior managers, felt paralyzed, uh, not just at the beginning uh, of the COVID crisis, but also in these past two years. And how, how does, that, does it come that people feel so paralyzed? They don't know what to do. Um, it's really, um, I think, um, if you as a leader want to show uh, that you care, you have to uh, also listen to your people and you have to make sure that there's still a lot of uh, division, um, mental division, disconnection between the leader and the organization and his or her uh, team members, let's say. So as a leader, um, and that's a bit uh, a sad thing that we've seen that a lot of uh, leaders have failed in connecting with their employees. Um, and um, how can we 
how can we resolve this by working on the leadership skills of team leaders of leaders who are actually supposed to to take on this uh, responsibility at the same time um, it's not all just negative because uh, we've also seen a positive trend and uh, we've seen the rise of some people who actually did not have the title of a leader but who took uh, their role in in this whole crisis so we saw the rise of new leaders uh, maybe sometimes young people and i think it's a very positive thing because um once we've identified these potential new leaders we can work on that and and see and see how they can actually uh, play their role and uh, and help the organization and their colleagues to become a best the better version of themselves research showed that the burnout and the burnout gap between uh, women and men have almost doubled since this last year are there any different approaches in organizational approach of uh, Yes, the burnout gap between men and women. Uh, yes, well, actually, it's not new. Um, it was already something that was uh, happening a long time before uh, the the Corona crisis. But this again, this was emphasized uh, due to the to the pandemic. Um, I think it's it's a bit dangerous to make any generalizations uh, when it comes to the causes. But intuitively, and especially uh, amongst our clients, I, we've seen quite some trends or, or potential reasons why this could, uh, uh, why, why we, how we could explain this. And um, it could be uh, due to the specific nature of, uh, let's say, a specific type of women. So let's not generalize it. All women are like this, but a lot of women are perfectionists. Um, and there's, and I must say that's more the case in Europe compared to the UAE that a lot of uh, ladies um, are struggling with the balance between family and work because um, they still have to combine a lot of uh, domestic tasks, even though this is changing and a lot of men are doing their uh, part in, in, in family life. How can we help um, the typical um, female burnout types? Well, actually by encouraging them um, to, um, to find their own um, uh, let's say leadership style, their own uh, work style, their work, their own balance, and not just trying to start from a typical male um, perception of this. Don't try to be like a man, because you can't. You will never be uh, as good as being a man uh, like a man himself. So, finding your own balance. So that's also, of course, we don't have a lot of examples, female examples. Um, they're still, st sadly, but they're still like the ideal uh, female leader. Um, we still have a bit of the idea that it should be a male type of woman, but actually that's not the case. So, so let's try to find as women a perfect balance uh, and a new kind of uh, leadership and, and uh, way of being where we combine the best uh, uh, female let's say, um, characteristics with uh, the new way of working, because that's exactly what we need now in these times. Let's say the more female uh, listening, softer skills, that's what will make the difference uh, in the future organizations. If we are going to discuss about job satisfaction and the company sustainability effort, uh, also study shows that uh, employees are engaged in, in their company sustainability work, say uh, it enhances their, their job satisfaction and overall feelings about the company. And you also mentioned the importance of the leadership example. Um, what did you notice, notice in, in your experience with the companies? What is the impact of the lack of personal involvement by business managers on the importance of sustainability? Because maybe employees are uh, are aware of the importance of the sustainability, but the leadership maybe lack this uh, understanding. Well, um, let's uh, first start to say when we as engagement specialists, um, we see a very clear link between sustainability and engagement. For me personally, it's one of the, it's the cherry on the cake. Uh, 
when we sustainability is a cherry on the cake uh, of engagement. Um, we have identified 12 drivers of employee engagement and sustainability for me really stands out. Um, why? Uh, because sustainability is one of the main uh, reasons why people are becoming super enthusiastic uh, about their work. They are leaving a legacy behind. Everybody wants to be part of something that is bigger than themselves, bigger than the company. So they really are leaving a legacy behind. So that's crucial, of course. So for me, I'm, and I'm very happy that you asked this question, engagement and uh, sustainability. Wow, top of a uh, top combination. So to come back to your specific question, how can leaders make sure that people um, are uh, involved in um, sustainability initiatives? Well, first of all, <laughs> um, actually link it to engagement. Uh, you will, the one cannot uh, work without the other. And you will not just increase uh, engagement by just announcing some sustainability initiatives. And you will not get more engagement from people by just uh, uh, setting up some of these. So. These are one of the, this is one of the first things you need to do. So make sure that your sustainability initiatives are very clear and that they are very clearly communicated to your employees. And then you can start working on that. But of course, the process is much more complicated than that. You mentioned that you identify 12 drivers of employee engagement. You are actually referring uh, to your book, and maybe we can discuss about this uh, now. Uh, your book is called uh, Employee Engagement, What Else? Can you please yes. tell us more about the 12 drivers that you illustrated through case studies, actually? And maybe you can give us some example of, of the case studies. Yes, yes, of course. So, um, so the book is called Employee Engagement, What Else? So in case you were wondering, the title What Else does refer to the uh, famous Nespresso slogan. <laughs> um, why did we choose uh, the Nespresso slogan, actually, to make a point, not just because uh, we love to drink coffee, <laughs> but also uh, because we actually wanted to show that a, um, a slogan, a famous slogan, a marketing slogan, is actually uh, also very powerful if you can just not use it to sell your product, but also use it internally. So that's the main purpose of the book, and that's using best marketing practices internally, because we don't do that enough. So, and that's actually the, the point of the book. And now we go into more detail. So we've identified these 12 drivers of engagement. Um, going from uh, let's say purpose, um, mission statements, learning and development, uh, compensation and benefits, uh, diversity, like all these different elements. And then when you look at what drives your specific engagement in your specific organization, we can't say it in advance what it will be because every organization, every nationality, every background is different. So um, we first need to see which are the main drivers in your specific organization. And then when we've, once we've identified these drivers in your specific organization, then uh, we can really see um, how we can work on it. And then indeed we've uh, developed a lot of case studies in the book and we've talked with a lot of experts that are really going deeper, diving deeper into these 12 drivers to actually make it very tangible for our audience, for our readers to see um, what drives them. And then finally in the book, we also uh, discuss uh, a lot of practicalities, practical tips and tricks for leaders, not just for HR, but for leaders, business leaders, team leaders, everyone who deals with uh, people, how they can practice and improve employee engagement in their very specific organization by using a lot of uh, tools. D did you identify some differences between the corporate cultures? I'm referring now to European corporate cultures and the region in the UAE. Yes. Do you have to change 
uh, your approach of the 12 drivers or it is it is the same so and that's a very good question nicoletta because it's something that we've really struggled with for a long time um, because um, we know uh, the GCC or the UAE well enough uh, to know about the specificities of the region. And I think uh, a common mistake by a lot of, let's say, consulting firms or by companies is that they think that the Western approach can just be copy, copied and pasted into the region. They don't feel and they don't see what is so specific about the region. Um, so when um, we started using these 12 drivers, we had exactly the same question as you had. So we tested it and we discussed it with some uh, academics because we really wanted to see if our model was also applicable, let's say to every region, to every nationality, to every, uh, let's say, if not just the UAE, uh, but also let's say in Africa or in Asia. And we came to the conclusion that the model the basis, these 12 drivers are still relevant for every organization. Now, that's the basis of the model. But what we do see is that there's a lot of differences between the emphasis uh, of an organization, of, of a region, of these drivers. So you see that it changes uh, depending on, on, um, on the, the, the organization we work with. Um, and if you look at those 12 drivers, there will be always be like three or four that really stand out in a specific organization. Of course, there are some universal, let's say, laws um, to, uh, that are applicable to a lot of organizations. And we've also seen, especially during the pandemic, that mm, even though the region is different, that there are still some of these uh, drivers that are really the same everywhere. And one of these, is actually what you just mentioned in the beginning of this interview is of course well-being, and this and another one is uh, leadership, obviously, uh, but we've discussed these uh, largely just before. If there is some tagline you identify and you can't use uh, this now at the end of our uh, discussion. Um, how to take engagement game to the next level? Um, okay. That, yes. yes, that's a very good one. Well, actually, uh, first of all, I would say uh, employee engagement is about uh, craftsmanship. Uh, even if you have the perfect, um, uh, let's say, perfectly engaged employees at this time, um, it will change because the world is changing so rapidly. So don't think that it's perfect now and it will stay perfect. You're working with people in a very uh, VUCA world. So uh, we really need to continue to craft it and to change it. Um, you mentioned remote work. Well, <laughs> working from home has had a huge impact uh, on organizations, even organizations that were super engaged. So I think. Uh, that's one of the main things, um, employee engagement is craftsmanship. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's the main uh, thing that I would like to, uh, to share here now about that. So also the companies need to be uh, aware of this change and be more dynamic and this rigid corporate policy we are used to, uh, it will probably disappear in a very short, uh, in a very short time. Well, actually, you already see it, um, and you've all, actually it was already tangible before the COVID crisis. Um, look at a huge organization, for example, like Cisco, uh, who have one hundred and forty thousand employees or something like that. They were already shifting. Uh, of course, there's a co corporate identity of the company, but they were already shifting actually to more of a team level because you can't just establish a good relationship um, as let's say the CEO, when you have so many employees, it's impossible to interact with everyone. So they are giving more and more power to, to people on a team level and to really help them to build that, let's say that specific culture, um, even if it's the, based on the, the, com the culture of the company, but a very specific culture on team level. And that's one of the main uh, 
tips that I can also give, like, it's okay, uh, especially when you're working from home and your team, your direct colleagues is quite a limited tribe. It's okay to have that specific subculture. Uh, it's one of the, let's say, I think one of the main uh, survival techniques uh, that uh, team leaders use during the pandemic. Because you can't just um, improve uh, your engagement when everybody's working from home for more than one year by organizing some uh, Zoom sessions or, uh, let's say, after work drinks uh, uh, on a virtual after work drinks or sending a present to people's homes. It's just not enough. So you need that specific connection between the team leader and the team members. Inge, where we can find the book now? Yes, so the book was written in, in Dutch because we uh, we work in a, in, a, in Belgium and the Netherlands, but it's also being translated. So it's almost finished. So it will be uh, released in English after the summer. But we also have um, an adapted uh, version um, to, the, to the GCC market because we really thought that it would be very relevant to uh, change the cases that we have um, with cases from the region. So uh, because uh, employee engagement and mental well-being and, and the whole discussion on, on well-being and sustainability is so specific in the region that uh, we, ha we really have to be able to inspire uh, local business people with local cases. Um, employee engagement in the UAE uh, specifically is uh, complicated um, by the fact that the diversity is enormous <laughs> uh, because of course different to other regions you have like the the local people are still in a majority and the diversity discussion is a discussion of let's open it to other uh, cultures in the uae well <laughs> the local people are just outnumbered <laughs> by expats so that gives a totally different dynamics to the whole discussion of diversity and inclusion and this is one of the main things that we are diving deeper into, into this book, especially with the cases for the UAE. And we want to show that it is possible um, with a very diverse workforce to not just respect each other, like that's what people do now, they respect each other, but they don't know each other. They don't really connect um, after work or during work hours. So there are very good examples where we can actually use that diversity within the company culture and use it as um, a trump card, let's say, as a really, really important asset in uh, improving engagement, in building that specific culture, and of course, attracting more customers, more top talent, uh, because actually that's what we all want, right? employee engagement, what else? India, thank you so much for your presence at the Rethink podcast. Thank you so much, Nicolette. It was a pleasure to, uh, to work with you.